Hi everyone, I'm James, M0YOM, and today we're going to be looking at station audio design. So you just plug in the cables and go, right? Well, sometimes. If you've got one radio, one microphone, use the built-in speakers, and you don't want to do anything like recording QSOs on the computer, then that's really all there is to it, and it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. If, however, you've got multiple rigs, uh, sharing multiple mics with the ability to record your audio, uh, and with multiple speaker options and digital interfaces, then we need to put a, a lot more thought into the audio design of the station, which is exactly what we're going to do in this video. Let's take a look at my requirements. Your requirements might be a little different, but I hope that some of what we'll be looking at will be of use in your station as well. In my case, I want to be able to use at least two radios. Uh, this will be the, um, the 7760 and the uh, 9700, both ICOMs. Um, I want to be able to use at least two, possibly three microphones. Uh, my Shure SM58, the Electro Voice RE20, and sometimes my Harl headset. I prefer the, the Harl headset when, uh, when contesting. I want to be able to use a selection of speakers, my bookshelf speakers, my wireless headphones, and my Harl headset. I want to be able to record QSOs, including my audio, not just the receive audio from the rig, and potentially send audio to the rigs from the computer. In my case, this is really important to be able to live stream too. I want to be able to tune the audio for each of these devices with appropriate equalization and compression settings and so forth, uh, just to get everything sounding just right. We've all heard bad audio, and I'm sure with, yeah, with all knobs to the right. Uh, so we, we want things sounding great. We'll be taking a closer look at the, the actual audio setup in a future video. And finally, I want everything to just work in a slick and seamless manner and be easy to use. You don't want to be in the middle of a contest or trying to work that rare DX only to find that you've accidentally switched to the wrong microphone and they can't hear what you're saying. Um, so let's take a look at some of the options we've got to uh, address this um, and, and meet some of these requirements. By far the simplest option would be to just swap over the cables uh, whenever I want to change a device. Uh, you know, unplug a microphone here, plug in a speaker there. Um, this can work, but it would add a lot of extra wear and tear on the cables and, and the connectors. Not to mention, for me at least, it would very quickly end up being extremely messy and confusing, and it certainly isn't very slick. Um, this approach is absolutely fine for a simple station where you're only very occasionally swapping devices, but I think we can rule this option out as far as I'm concerned. Now, I could use a variety of switch boxes uh, combined with you know, maybe some EQ boxes and, and compressor and so forth uh, and change the rig audio settings whenever I wanted to swap to a different microphone. In many circumstances, I'd say probably the majority, um, it can be a very cost effective and, and simple option and, and it's a really great choice. Um, but for my situation, uh, things would quickly get messy again uh, with lots of switches and buttons. Um, so I don't think this solution is, 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 is really is really right in my case. Um, now, the solution uh, for my particular situation and the one that we'll be, uh, we'll be going with has been around for many, many years. Uh, and some of you, I'm sure, are already doing this in your stations, and that's to use an audio mixer. I'm sure most of you have, but just in case anyone hasn't encountered a mixer, also known as a mixing desk or a mixing console before, uh, they come in a variety of forms, from very simple passive devices with a few connectors and knobs, uh, to small two-channel desktop mixers, uh, all the way through to huge professional mixing desks. They've been used in you know, the music industry, live audio, DJ, broadcast industries for many, many decades, and in principle, they're just a device for taking multiple audio signals, be that from a microphone, an instrument, or some other audio device, combining them together and outputting that combined signal. Now, we're not going to be doing any much actual mixing of signals beyond what we send to the uh, to the speakers. Uh, instead, we'll be taking advantage of a capability uh, that exists in those mixers that have got more than just a basic left and right output channel. And that's to use it as a sort of audio router. Uh, allowing us to take multiple input signals and send them to any of the multiple outputs. Now, I'm not overly keen on having something like this sitting around on my desk. Uh, it takes up a lot of space. Uh, it doesn't allow for good management of the cables, not to mention that sliders which are found on, on most mixers can get knocked and accidentally moved. Uh, these are really designed for, uh, you know, if, you, if you're actually wanting to use it for mixing and, and um, adjusting things all the time. Uh, instead, I'll be using one of the Behringer or Behringer XAir series of digital mixers, specifically the XR18. 
uh, as this gives me all the input and output options that I need. Um, I think it's got eight, uh, eight output channels and, and um, 18 input channels. I thought now would probably be a good time to take a, a, a bit of a closer look at one of these um, Behringer XR mixers. Um, now this is my, uh, my old XR tw uh, or XR12. Uh, but essentially, it's exactly the same as the um, as the XR18. Uh, we just have less in the way of inputs and, uh, and outputs, um, but they're they're very similar. I mean, they're, they're quite small devices. Um, they're not very uh, not very large at all. Uh, the XR18 is, uh, is is slightly deeper than um, than this one. Um, but we we basically have our, our twelve uh, inputs in the case of uh, in the case of this one. Four of them are uh, kind of combined XLR or quarter inch jack. Uh, inputs. Um, the rest of the inputs on the XR12 uh, are uh, a quarter inch jack on the um, on the uh, the larger model they're uh, they're all these combined XLR uh, and uh, quarter inch um, jack or, or TRS uh, tip ring sleeve um, connectors. Uh, and then on this particular model we've got um, we've got just the four outputs uh, main left and right and then two auxiliary. Uh, on the XR18, there are uh, I think eight total outputs um, that will be uh, that we've been making use of, uh, and they really are a, a great bit of kit. There's also a, a headphone output here, which on the uh, XR18 we'll be making use of for, for connecting to the Heil um, the Heil headset. Uh, just avoids having to have a separate amplifier for the uh, for the headphones. Um, now these are these are actually controlled uh, through a variety of mechanisms. Uh, we'll be using the the wired Ethernet connector, and there's a there's a great app that we'll be looking at in a future video uh, for setting it all up and, and controlling it and monitoring the uh, the audio. Um, we've also got a USB connection there, and uh, it can use Wi-Fi as well, uh, which is quite handy. Um, so really great device. Uh, as I say, Behringer haven't always got the 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 best reputation but um, I really rate these I know a, a, a few people who use these um, both for radio and uh, and in kind of normal audio um, audio work as well uh, and they, they, they really are a fantastic bit of kit and, and very cost effective uh, they're not overly expensive uh, not in the scheme of things really um, so uh, yeah they're, they're, they're well worth uh, well worth having a look at it's very, very flexible. Um, it's got a built-in equaliser, built-in compressors, uh, and gives me way more options and flexibility than, than I could ever wish for and, and than I'll ever need, quite frankly. Um, now, I'm not at all associated with Behringer. Uh, I know that they don't always have the best reputation, uh, but personally, I would very much recommend these mixers. Uh, I believe they represent fantastic value for money, given all of the features and capabilities. Um, and my old XR12 mixer ran 24 seven for the better part of five years uh, without so much as a hiccup. Uh, so they're, 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 they're good devices. Now let's take a look at how we're gonna hook all of this up. As you can see, um, We've got all of our radios and computers in the top left, uh, the IC7760, the 9700, the main shack PC, and the SDR PC. Uh, a lot more about this in a future video. Um, the microphone inputs on both the rigs come from the two outputs on the mixer, uh, and the speaker outputs on the rigs go to four of the inputs on the mixer. Um, I could use the line outs from the rig, but I still like to have control over the, the rig volume from the front of the, the rigs themselves. Uh, it feels a lot more natural uh, doing that. Uh, I also have the line out from both computers going to the mixer, and a USB connection from the Shack PC to the mixer. Uh, this is a neat feature of the XR18, which allows something called USB audio returns. Essentially, this lets me send audio to and from various channels of the mixer over a single USB connection, and it's a, an absolutely fantastic way of, of recording audio um, from the uh, from the mixer. On the bottom left, we've got all of our microphones, uh, the SM58, the RE20, uh, the Heil headset, uh, and the, the Heil headset in particular connects through um, a regular 3.5 millimeter jack, which will be um, mounted just underneath my uh, my desk to allow for easy connection and removal when I'm not using it. Um, on the right hand side, we've got the various speaker outputs, my bookshelf speakers, uh, which run through a small amplifier made by SMSL, uh, my Sennheiser RS175 wireless headphones, uh, and again, via an under desk um, mounted 3.5 millimeter jack, my whole headset. Um, all looks fantastic, doesn't it? We can send all the audio where we want it to. We can use the mixer's built-in EQ and compressor features to get my audio sounding just how I'd like it. Um, that's it, we're done. Well. Not quite. You see, 
whilst it looks like we've achieved everything we want to, uh, we've just inadvertently introduced a, um, a huge problem. Uh, <laughs> and that's ground loops. Um, and in part two of this video, we'll be looking at exactly what ground loops are, uh, why they're a problem, ways that we can address them uh, and avoid them in some cases, uh, including the approach that I'll be taking in, in my station build. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when part two is released. Um, what approach have you taken in your, uh, your station audio? Um, do you use switch boxes? Do you use a, a, a mixer? Um, I'd be interested to hear. Let me know down in the comments. And if you've got any questions, suggestions or ideas, I'd love to hear them too. And remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified about future videos, uh, especially part two, which will be, uh, be coming up um, uh, in a week or so. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.